Hey, are you here? Hello, it's me, it's Tally. Hello, oh, for goodness sake, you don't have to just scare the crap out of me like that, gee. Oh, man, okay, yes, I'm here. Hi. Yeah, I, uh, I brought my book and I brought a flashlight. One sec. Yeah, I know we, uh, we talked about me teaching you the basics and I'm going to do my best to at least get started tonight. Um, and I'm going to try really hard not to ramble, but you know me, I ramble a lot. So, the basics of making a D&D character, um, I did bring a character sheet to show you, um, and yes, it's laminated, but it's not laminated because you're in the water. It could be, but I laminate character sheets because I use, um, dry erase markers on them in order to keep track of everything, and it's just a little easier that way if I'm not just using my laptop, but I didn't want to bring electronics this close to the lake. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so here's the sheet, and let me explain a little bit about it. So right up here at the top is where you put your character's name, obviously, um, and then off to the side of it there's a bunch of little things, and we can get to that in a bit. Um, but, so see this column right below the name? Yeah, these are your stats. So this is like how good you are at certain things. We've got strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. So strength is, you know, how beefy you are, how strong you are. It's pretty self-explanatory. Dexterity is more how, like, nimble you are and quick. Uh, your constitution is... I would say how hardy you are. Um, it's also like your ability to ingest something bad for you and not throw up. <laughs> um, your intelligence is how smart you are, but like specifically how book smart you are. And your wisdom is more like how street smart you are. Uh, and then your charisma is obviously how well you interact with other people. There's a lot of different kinds of charisma. Most often in D&D, people stereotype it as like your ability to seduce whatever you see, but that's not <laughs> necessarily the case. I played a very high-level sorcerer once who had absolutely maxed out charisma because, uh, she was just this adorable, innocent little thing, and people just couldn't say no to her when she was giving them the big, wide, sad eyes and just asking, please help us. <laughs> it was really fun. I had a really good time. So yeah, so that's your stats. Um, then the, the big boxes and then the little bubbles people either interchange for where the number or the modifier goes. I was taught to put the stat in the big box and the modifier in the little bubble, but you use the modifier more than you actually use the base number, so most people switch it. I guess I shouldn't say most. Most people at my table switch it. Uh, some people elsewhere probably switch it. I don't know. Um, and then right here next to it, this is your saving throws, so usually a reaction to something that's happening to you. Most often it's magic, like area of effect type things. Um, and those will get to, like, certain classes get proficiencies with certain saving throws, and then below that are all your skills. And those take a long time to explain, so I'm not going to explain every single one of them. Um, but if you look, it's just a bunch of stuff that will probably come up in a campaign. I will say, 
if you can get proficiency in perception, you should probably snag proficiency in perception because it's the most commonly used skill. Um, and then, let's see, over here is your speed, your armor class, and your initiative. We'll get to that after we've got, like, equipment and stuff. Below that is your hit points. Um, off to this, on this far right side of the page, you've got, you know, your personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. Um, those we will also get to after you've picked a background. It doesn't really do a whole lot. It's mostly just there to kind of guide how you're going to roleplay your character. And sometimes the background that you pick doesn't have exactly what you want, and that's okay. Because they don't really affect anything, that they're more of a guide, uh, you can just do kind of whatever the heck you want. <laughs> Um, okay, and then below that we've got uh, features and traits, which is stuff that you will fill out, or we can fill out, after you've got a race and class uh, right here in the middle, uh, attacks and spell casting. That's just kind of a quick look at stuff that you've got. So if you've got weapons, you put them there. You can put a couple of your base spells there if you take magic. Um, below that we've got equipment. Uh, which is just stuff that you've got on you, and these bubbles with the little tiny letters are like your currency. D&D has a uh, coin-based currency, copper, silver, technically electrum, uh, gold, and platinum, and nobody uses electrum. Or maybe they do, I don't know. My table doesn't, we hate it. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a base 10 system, so there's 10 coppers to a silver, 10 silvers to a gold. People don't use Electrum much, at least at my table, because Electrum is like 5 Electrum to a gold. And then there's some debate amongst my table, at least, whether Platinum is 100 gold or 10 gold. And I don't know what to tell you about that, <laughs> because I've always thought it was 10 gold. And then I go to this new group, and everyone's telling me it's 100 gold, and I'm like, okay, if you say so. Uh, and this new group has a couple of people who are kind of tryhards for memorizing the rules, so I guess I'm just going to trust them for now. <laughs> yeah, so, and then in this bottom left corner, uh, it's like languages and proficiencies. It's, you get a bunch of stuff for... Uh, your racing class, and that is the first page. This is kind of a basic rundown. Um, over here on the second page, it's just more character information. You've got like physical description up in the top corner, you know, hair color, eye color, skin color, blah, 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 blah. Um, there's additional features and traits for when your little box on the first page runs out of room. There's a spot where you can like put a character appearance if you want. Uh, your allies and organizations, and then there's a section for treasure, which is stuff that, you know, you accumulate over the course of your adventure. And then this third page is literally just your magic tracker, and if you pick a character class that has no magic, you don't even need this page at all. Um, but if you want to be a spellcaster, then you would need this page a lot. Ah. Uh, I almost always play a character that has magic in some way because I'm a human living in the boring human world and I love magic. <laughs> Mechanically it can be a little bit messy um, and it's a lot to keep track of but I don't keep track of my spells as much on the sheet anymore. I keep track of my spells um, on an app on my phone. Um, and then I use the character sheet just to track my spell slots. 
Um, so your spell slots are like how much energy you have for specific spells. Um, up here where it says zero, those are cantrips. I mean, it says cantrips right next to it too, but um, those are very, very quote-unquote weak spells that you can just cast at will and you don't need any spell slots. Um, they level up as you level up, so they're still not great, but they're not that bad. Um, if you pick some good ones, you could have the potential to do some pretty decent damage. Um, and then there's uh, spell levels 1 through 9. Um, with 1 being the weakest, 9 being the highest. A lot of classes don't unlock a 9th level spell slot until like 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th level. Well, I think usually between 17 and 18. Um, and pretty much all classes only get one ninth level spell slot because it's just so much magic. But ninth level spell slots deal some heavy damage. Like, holy cow. Uh, yeah. Ninth level spell slots are hefty. Um, oh. Well, for example, um, that cute little sorcerer I told you about, she was actually level 20. And so she had a ninth level spell slot. And one of the spells that she had, I didn't end up needing to use it because it was just a one shot. Uh, that's a D&D &D session that's like one, two, maybe three sessions long. Um, meant to just be a short, tiny little adventure. Um, I didn't end up needing to use my ninth level spell slot for this spell. I had to use it for something else, but, uh, one of the ones she has is called Blade of Disaster, where you do, like, 4d12, which is a 12-sided dice. I'll show you my dice later. Um, you do 4d12 damage, unless you crit, in which case you do 12d12 damage, which is ridiculous because d12s are the highest damage dice and even most spells don't end up uh don't end up using d12s much um unless you're playing a barbarian so well barbarians have a weapon that most people who play barbarians choose to use that does a d12 um the great axe, but most other classes don't get access to anything that hefty. Um, I guess they could. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so if we want to glance at like races and stuff, we're just gonna keep it simple. There's a bunch of like expansion books that give you all sorts of new races, but um, the main player's handbook just has a handful, and uh. We'll just keep it to those for now. Um, these ones are very much basic. Humans, dwarves, elves. I have no idea how you live in a lake next to a highway that's this loud and you're still sane, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, anyway, yeah. Humans, dwarves, elves, half-elves, half-orcs. Uh, and tieflings and dragonborn and I didn't do that in the order that they're in in the book but that's just kind of what they are um, humans obviously they're like me <laughs> um, elves have a couple sub races with different proficiencies so do dwarves oh I forgot halflings halflings too halflings are very useful if you pick the one that has essentially the lucky feat where if you roll a natural one on your 20-sided dice you can roll again which is amazing I can't believe I've never played a halfling before because that is very useful because I roll ones all the time one set of my dice in particular absolutely hates me but they're really pretty so I keep using them <laughs> yes that is very much a, uh, a human thing 
uh, yeah, yeah, um, we don't have to go through all of them tonight. I was just trying to start giving you a bit of a rundown. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, so those are the base races, um, and then the base classes, there's barbarian, bard, cleric, druid, fighter, uh, monk, paladin, ranger, rogue, sorcerer, warlock, and wizard, and then one of the, um, expansion books that I have back at home added a brand new class, um, called the Artificer, which is essentially a magic engineer, um, which is the easy way to put it, um, but with classes, a lot of people say that it's what you do, how you make your living as an adventurer, which I would add a little caveat to that. It's not exactly wrong, but like the background you pick, depending on the background itself, is more like your job, you know, and your adventuring class is more how you do what you do, because barbarians and fighters are kind of similar. They have minimal magic, if they have any at all, um, and they uh, are both the heavy damage dealers who give and can take a lot of damage, but um, the difference being Barbarians hit really hard, but they don't hit a lot. Whereas fighters are fast and they can do... Oh man, if you get to a high enough level, you can do like four attacks in one turn. And one turn is supposed to take six seconds. Um, so four attacks in six seconds, you are moving ridiculously ridiculously fast in order for that to happen. Most classes get one... Most magic classes get like one attack per turn. Um, and then some of the more melee or uh, I guess just physical, not magic, um, classes get two. And then there's fighters, where they get like four, sometimes five, if they've got like, one weapon in each hand, then they can action and bonus action, um, with adding an extra weapon attack for their bonus action. Um, and I will explain the difference between an action and a bonus action later, because it's just kind of a mess. The combat mechanics are a thing that take a little bit of time to learn, and back when I was first learning, it took me forever to figure it out. So, yeah. What are you thinking of playing? Oh, yeah, I guess without any context, you wouldn't really know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so barbarians hit hard, take a lot of damage. Bards, they are full spellcasters. Most D&D classes that can cast magic are split between full spellcasters and half spellcasters. Full spellcasters mean that you can eventually reach level 9. And half spellcasters mean that you can only reach level 5. Um, like, rangers and paladins only ever get up to level 5. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, if you're feeling a little overwhelmed, that's okay. Um, I can, uh give you some time to think about it, and then I can come back a little later, and we can, uh, we can do this. It, it doesn't have to be now, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're a mer person in a lake, you're not likely to be joining a D&D group anytime soon, but, um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's very justifiable to feel overwhelmed. I was when I first learned, and I've been playing for five years, 
I think I was pretty young. I, well, I was in college. So I reached out to a friend and was like, can you please teach me how to play D&D? Because you know how to play. She said, yep. And she tried her best and I didn't learn very much. Well, no, I learned a lot. I just didn't learn it well. Um, and then I tried DMing my own thing. I wasn't very good at it because I still didn't know the rules and the mechanics very well. And then I joined this new group and I have learned so much. So I'm so much better at it now. So it's a very good thing that I'm teaching you about this now because now I actually know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, we don't have to do all of this tonight. I mean, heaven knows it would take forever. But, um, yeah. No big deal. Um, I can leave this character sheet here with you if you want. You can look at it. Um, actually, hang on. I have one in my bag. It's completed. Uh, it has all the base stuff because it was a level 20 character. So it has all the base stuff like typed into it. And then I laminated it. And then all the things that could get modified and changed, uh, I would dry erase over it with a dry erase marker. Um, so, yeah, let me leave that one with you. And you can just kind of read it over. Um, and then I will come back later and we can talk a little bit more about like what you want. And I really wish I could leave the book with you, but it's, it's a little wet <laughs> out here. Anyway, it's, it, it's not your fault. It's a lake. You have to live in it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I will leave this character sheet with you, the blank one and the not blank one of one of my old characters and I will come back as soon as I can and we can get started on this okay <laughs> okay cool yeah I'll see you later I am gonna take off okay yeah see you soon bye <laughs>